we have a word for this house this year is an excellent spirit and I always say to them that whenever God gives you a word be ready to face challenges that contradicts the word that God has given you if God tells you that you'll be a father of many nations it's very likely that you will struggle to have children there will be opposition. If God has called you a mighty nation, it means that you will go through things. There is nobody through the Bible, if you look from Genesis to Revelation, that God gave a word that it came easy. It always comes with challenges. But we bless God. Amen. Amen. We glory in season and hour of season. I want to go into teaching um, the word of God this morning, as um, afternoon or morning, wherever you're watching from. Good to see our online viewers once again. I want to continue the series I've been teaching, but before that, I would like for us to bow our heads in prayer and ask for the Lord to give us a relevant word. Now, I have prepared a word that God gave me, but I want you to pray that out of this, that God will speak to you personally, that God will give you a word. Maybe it might just be something that will bring a shift in your life, but I just want us to pray. I want you to place a demand on the word of the Lord and say, God, you got to speak to me this Sunday afternoon. You you got to give me a word. I need a word. I know everybody's here demanding things from you, but I need a word. I need to hear from you. I need to, to get something from you. I need to receive from you. I need to be blessed by you. I need to get something from this word that you are have designated for us today. Therefore, Lord, I ask that you speak to me. Now, Father, I pray that you use my tongue like the pen of a ready writer, that I would not do injustice to your word, but rather, Lord, that I will bring your word with clarity of speech and with boldness. I ask, O oh God, that you release an anointing and relevant for today for us in the name of Jesus. I pray this day that no flesh will glory in this place, that your spirit, O oh God, that is already here will take preeminence O oh God of this word. I have an understanding according to your word that the enemy has no jurisdiction around this environment. So we know that Satan has no expression during this service. Father, we pray to stay, God. Lord, that your spirit will move like never before. Lord, that an anointing that we desire, a fresh oil, Lord, that will be released upon us today, O oh God. Let your word come to you. Let your word deliver. Let it save. Let it transform. Let it restore. Let your word change, O oh God and let your word bring people back to you uh, in the name of Jesus. I bless you, oh God, uh, in Jesus' name. And I also pray that as I deliver your word, uh, let my mind be so sharp and quick uh, that I would not miss anything you're saying to your people. Uh, but I also pray, God, and even though I bring your word, uh, may I also partake of this word that is coming forth today, that I would not be left out nor be a castaway after I've spoken to your people. I pray to stay in Jesus name we have prayed and let the saints of God I believe say amen. amen amen hallelujah if David leave early please you guys excuse him we've had a conversation he might leave stick out at some point in the service but that's fine amen let's celebrate God for him let's up Bishop David celebrate God for the man of God hallelujah amen, amen. so I want to continue the series on the divine original we're talking about God's formative process. This one is so deep that it's taking us um, three weeks. This is a taught part that I've been teaching and we're trying to still exhaust it. Last week we could not preach because the glory of God was so present in the house. We had a prayer service. Hallelujah. So we want to go on into what God has for us today. Humans have the unique ability to see a thing as it is. I want us to listen very carefully because I don't want to rush this world. Humans have the unique ability to see something as it is. So if I see this plant, I have been designed to see things the way they are. I am seeing it as it is. And we also have the ability to see uh, that same thing better than it is, which means there are certain people who whose ability is to see something the way it is, but there are also certain people who have transcended that level to see things beyond what it is. And so whilst 
you may look at that on the feet while I'm calling her barren. There are other people that have uh, the potential spiritually to look at that same woman and see several babies inside her womb. So whilst you may see somebody and call them a nobody, there are people who have ascended that level and they can see them and see potential in them. Whilst you may look at a nation and call the nation a third world country, there are people who have the understanding and the tools, they have the resources necessary to bring out something out of that same place that you call nothing. It is the reason why when you walk past a log of wood, another individual walk to that log of wood and make a furniture out of it. Because you can't see everything there is about a person does not mean that that is all there is for them. Oh, it is this point, if I have the time, I will tell you to look at somebody and tell them there is more to me than meets the eyes. Uh, because all you see is not all there is to see about me. Let me tell you something. If all you see is all there is to see, then all you will get is all there is to get. That when you go beyond the point, and I don't want to preach quickly, Bishop, but this thing is one inside of me. That when you go beyond the point to realize that all I see is not all there is to see, then I begin to place demand on what is there. Because even though everybody sees it and call it a small portion of land, I have the ability spiritually by descending of spirit to see beyond what is physically seen and know that there is something there. It is the reason why a man would dig a crown, try to get gold or diamond out of it. But because he is limited in his insight on what is there in that crowd, he sells the land, packs up his machine and leaves the land, not realizing folks that he was closest to hitting diamond. And when we saw the land and left the bishop. The next end of it will whoop up the land for cheap. Uh, talk just a little distance and found the diamond that the man, let me tell you, I pray for you that you will not miss out on what God has destined for you because you lack the spiritual insight to wait and get everything that is for you. Many of us have left the place because of a season we could not get something from it. We left the place only for other people to walk in and get something out of that place. Let me tell you, when you operate with a spiritual dimension, you will buy a property where other people are selling off their property and walk in a way. But just one month, maybe one year, a new developer comes in and says, we want to develop that place to an urban living. We want to pay triple for every property that is there. And in one month or in one year, your investment multiplies three times when other people sold and left you bought properties let me tell you something a secret come closer let me tell you don't tell nobody when you operate in the spirit you can buy things when people are selling off are you hearing me when you operate in the spirit you don't run out because everybody say run when you operate in the spirit when men say there is a casting down you say what when you operate in the spirit, when people say the economy is down, Daryl, you are buying things, you're buying stocks and shares. When they say it is stumbling, you get excited because God has just told you to buy up. People will call you foolish when you operate in the spirit. People will call you dumb when you operate in the spirit because a man that operates in the spirit often goes contrary to popular opinion. You don't do what others do. You don't say what others say. You don't act as others act. You buy when others sell. You sell when others buy. You marry when others say can marry. I said I wanted to preach. This is why I didn't want David to keep pressing that thing because he begins to stare something in my spirit. I'm just only on the introduction of what I'm about to speak. And now you're getting me excited. So I said, there is one level where you can see things as they are. There is another level where you can see things beyond what is not seen. Uh, one is called facts. Say facts. 
and the other is called faith. Say faith. Faith can be developed and facts can be acquired. You don't acquire faith. You develop faith. Ah, uh, you hearing me? I, I can stay there all day. You can acquire facts, which means you can go and find out things. But when it comes to faith, you don't acquire it. You develop it, which means it grows from level to level. Now, if God can bless me with just one meal in the day, then I can be developed in my faith to believe God. That God can give me a sandwich in the afternoon. If God can give me a sandwich, I can believe God. That God can pay the bills of my children in school. If God can pay the bills of my children in school, Perhaps I can believe God uh, that God can buy me a property. Uh, if God can buy me a property, then I can believe God. You see, my faith uh, is developing as a result uh, of my trust in God. Uh, but if you don't have anything to trust God about, uh, the enemy often will come and tell you God is not faithful. Uh, there is nothing God can do for you. Uh, and oftentimes we believe God only about when people tell us uh, that God can do nothing. You know why? Because we don't always look around us uh, to see the goodness of God the Lord. There is always something God has done for you. This is why I tell people if you cannot think, you cannot thank. Thankfulness is a byproduct of thinking because the psalmist said that when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all he has done for me, my soul begins to rejoice because I can think of something. I can think of when he brought me from the backside and night, son of night children. Uh, I grow from a street where there was nothing to eat. Walking on the street, hawking things on my head. No one believed anything good would come out of me. I'm a first generation preacher in my house. Which means nobody preached before. Uh, but let me tell you something. There is a kind of faith on the inside of me. I'm a pioneer. I'm a man that chapter the cross. I'm a man to run in a place where nobody ran before. Because I believe the word of the Lord. Paul said it's not by watch lest any man should boast. It's not because we are skilled or very intelligent. As a matter of fact, the world will call me foolish. I'm fine with that. Because the Bible reminds me that God, it is only God, the bishop, who can use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. You didn't hear me. It is God who can use a foolish plantain seller to write five books and lead a church. It is only God, I tell you. It's only God that can employ a boy like me. <laughs> let's go deeper. Yeah, let's go deeper. So I said facts can be acquired and faith developed. I'll try to calm down. That will calm down. Calm down. The facts that we acquire are essential. Don't get me wrong. It is good practice to find facts to support our belief. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians, Marvin, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 13 to 18. But I want to read first from verse 7 to 12. 2 Corinthians, it should be on the screen if you can see it. I want to read from verse 7. It said, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God. Did you see that? We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. Go on, Marvin. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry about in our body the death of Jesus. So that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Go on, son. For we who are alive are always dead, given over to death for Jesus' sake. So that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Verse 13, if you go on, I uh, like that. Thank you, son. It is written, I believe. Say, I believe. I believe. Therefore, I have spoken. 
Your speaking is a byproduct of your belief. This is why I said to people that if you don't know what to say, shut your mouth. Because you can think a thing, but if you have not spoken it, you have not given life to it. Every time you open your mouth to speak, you give life to something. So if you don't know what to say, look, your thoughts will not be able to betray you if your mouth hasn't voiced it. Oh. Lord have mercy, I can stay that all day. Since we have this same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Every time you speak should be because you believe. If you believe, it prompts you to speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. This is my verse now coming, verse 17. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. I love this verse now, I'm getting excited. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen but on what is unseen since what is seen is temporarily limited and subject to change but what is not seen is eternal the word fix there always get my attention because when i was growing up in the faith thank you bishop when i was growing up in the faith and nobody told us to fix our eyes they they said you can't it's not about fixing your eyes but as i grew up apostle i discovered that everybody looks the, the ones that fix their eyes on the things that are seen fix their eyes and the ones that fix their eyes and the things that are not seen also fix their eyes. So the problem was not in fixing your eyes. The problem is what you fix your eyes upon. So the problem is not in what you are looking at. Or the problem is not rather what you're, if you're looking or not. The problem is what you are looking at. Because the man that is looking at this plant literally seeing the plant the man was looking at the plant and seeing the potential of this plant is also looking but whilst one in the feet is looking and say well this is just a decoration another woman on the backside is already seeing the potential in every of these petals she has decorated an entire building by this plant you call it a plant and they just use it to decorate the church. But because she operates on a different dimension when it comes to decoration, she already knew how to design a building, in fact, several building with this one part of plants. But we are all looking. So while somebody look at you and call you a nobody, this man looks at you and says, man, she's my damn self. She's caught in Palestine. I'll marry her. But somebody look at the building and call it a rundown building, you are negotiating to buy it. Why would one individual run away from a place where other people are running into? Why, 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 why would you get excited about something that other people are cussing? But this is why I don't cuss any country God put me in because my responsibility is not the cost, but the bless. Many of us believers should be careful because we are part of the problem in our nation. Talking about Nigeria, for instance. Because we have contributed in dilapidating our nation with our words. The Bible says, where the word of a king is, there is power. We should be very careful. If you don't know what to say, don't get involved. Be non-partisan. They don't use your mouth to cost the place that God has given you. Some people have cost their employers and they're expecting the organization to thrive. It won't thrive because you cost it already. You can't be promoted when you cost the organization all the time. This rubbish organization, this organization, if you, if you want to cost it, leave the place. How can you cost a place that you are a part of? 
So, all right. Let, let, let me go further. So, he said, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Now, the word fix, you can, you can exchange the word fix for concentrate, pay attention to our focus. So, we don't, we don't focus. We are looking, but we are not focusing on what is seen. Uh, like David, we must learn to use facts intelligently to our advantage and increase our faith. Every fact about you should be used to your advantage and increase your faith. David, when dealing with Goliath, we all know the story from Sunday school days. They found facts to support his belief. David did not walk on assumption or suspicion. He was certain about his confession and it was the evidence of his belief that engineered or empowered his faith. David did not discard the facts of what happened before. He didn't leave it before. He didn't say the killing of the bear and the lion is inconsequential concerning Goliath. No. But this is the mistake we make because we are encountering a $10 billion problem. We discard the $1,000 problem that we solve. Can I bring you in? Because you are encountering a $10 billion problem, you are now um, discarding every, every little thing you went through because your mind is telling you uh, it is inconsequential compared to what you are dealing with right now. But let me tell you the God, God that you serve that brought you out of a $1 problem, out of a $1,000 problem, is the same God that can bring you out of a $10 billion problem. Now what the devil don't want you to do is to have a reference point for you to have precedence in court. That is what the devil don't want. But if you can be intelligent enough and spiritual, have spiritual understanding to know uh, that I can make reference that look, in my low estate, if God brought me out of a $1 rent problem, the same God who brought me out of a $1,000 rent problem uh, is the same God that can bring me out of this place right now. Uh, if God hasn't done it before, then that is a problem. But listen, uh, if God has done it before, then I know it can. In fact, I don't have to wait for God to do it for me. If God has done it for Saki, are you hearing me? As far as I know that God did it for Saki, I can go to court without Saki's reference. Because look, when you go to court and put your case before the, 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 the lawyers or the, the high court, you don't have to have precedence on what you have experienced. But as long as it has happened before, you can say a case against the state and Elizabeth. She presented the case and she won the case on the facts of this. Now I am pulling on Elizabeth's experience and presenting before the court and to say well if she won the case against the state I'm pulling on that because it happened before say it's happened before. Oh let me tell you something I don't know what you're dealing with but you gotta look around and find out if God has done it before. If God has brought somebody out of shame before. If God has brought somebody out of prison before. If God has moved somebody from the backside to the front before. If God has pulled somebody up from shame to the top before. If God has elevated somebody before. If God has blessed the barren womb before. If a 90 year old man has given birth before. Are you hearing me? Then who am I not to conceive? Who am I not to bet something? Who am I not to bless a child? If God has brought you somebody out before I told you I, want, I don't want to be excited because if God has done it before all I need to find out has he done it before has somebody's child be signed on a contract at 12 years old 50 million pounds has he done it before oh he has oh God he's done it before now I'm presenting my case are you hearing me my sister-in-law had a testimony where somebody put a note and said look you don't qualify for this I don't want to go into details I will leave her to testify in due time but the, the, the case handler said you don't qualify for this but I took the liberty to look around the institution to find if it has happened before you didn't hear me to find out if somebody has been granted before listen you didn't ask me I took the liberties I know you don't qualify
understand. It is easy uh, for me to say no, refusal. Uh, you don't qualify. And it's a fact. You don't qualify. But because you don't have the inside information, can I prophesy? It wants to run out of me quickly. Let me say it. Uh, let me tell you, I prophesy uh, that in places where you don't qualify, uh, that God will move people on your behalf. Uh, that people will begin to speak for you. Uh, people will find precedence on your behalf. Uh, people will find reason for you to be blessed. Uh, reason for you to be promoted. Uh, you don't have to ask them. I feel this so strong in my spirit. Jesus. The man said, You don't qualify. I can show you the letter. Evidence. He said, But I took the liberty to find out grounds for you to be granted. Jesus. You don't qualify. I took the liberty to find grounds why it is your proposal that should be acknowledged. Let me bring it home. Your paperwork is not up to scratch based on what you qualify or you applied for. I could re refuse you easily and nobody will say nothing. That I took the liberty, let me tell you, when the prophetic word goes ahead of you, you got to run with that one because I told her the day she applied. I said within 24 hours, you will get a response. And let me tell you, the first response came and it was no. She was cast down and I said, baby, you got to stand. And I, I keep saying to her, she's here. I said, do not allow a negative word come out of your mouth. I dare you to not allow a negative word come out of your mouth because you will contradict everything that has been spoken over your head. And my wife was there in the conservatory. She came as she was walking from the conservatory to the living room to meet her sister. The word had changed. The new word came and said, did I not tell you you will be granted the thing was turned around Around less than 12, less than less than an hour. When God moves on your behalf, you, see, you, you just gotta find out. Look, the thing is that we're finding out things that are not relevant to us. Let's call it Facebook looking at things that don't concern us. Looking at Instagram and TikTok and laughing at nonsense that's got nothing to do with your faith. Nothing to, got to do with what you're believing God for. I am looking for testimonies in the word and looking for people to encounter what God has done something for. So I can use them as reference point to appear before God. See, God, God don't play with fast because when Hezekiah was going to be killed, God sent Isaiah a renowned prophet to go and tell him that put your house together because you're coming home. Hezekiah could have said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it. Blessed be the name of it. He said, no, 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 that ain't me I'm playing. That is only for, forget it. I, he, didn't, he didn't doubt, he didn't, he didn't contest nothing with Isaiah. He didn't quarrel with Isaiah. He said, thank you Isaiah you've brought the word of the Lord now. Let me go to the one who has the power to change everything. And when he met the Lord, he started speaking to the Lord. He said, he said, this is what I have done. This is what I have done. This is what, look, your seed will cry out for you. He pointed out facts and God extended his life. Oh. So, when an apostle and bishop was praying over Tony yesterday and started calling, oh, my spirit move the seed that your father sown, the wells that your father's a dog. You think that when your fathers dig well in the kingdom of God spiritually, it only limits the church? They are wells. They are wells. Let me tell you, I believe strongly in your family that ancient doors have been lifted. Amen. I was standing there yesterday. I didn't have the time to say that when my bishop was praying, 
What I keep hearing was, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. There are ancient doors that have restricted things that belong to your family, even it belong to your father. That he did not have the time to enjoy. Ancient doors restricting the wealth in your household. There is a huge dimension. You are you, you all haven't seen nothing yet. There is a huge dimension of wealth in your family. I will say it boldly without holding back. There is a huge dimension. You've not seen yet. Look, wait for your children to begin to prosper. And you will be blown away. You think your children have excelled academically? They see nothing yet. That is a deep of it. Those are just little things. For those are sprinkles for God to show you that something is happening. Those are just the aroma to show you that the good food is good, you know. Those are just little things that are just coming up for you to know that something is happening. But there is a wealth in your house. There is greatness in your house. And today we stand upon the word. We declare this day that ancient doors are lifted in the name of Jesus. That you will walk into the abundance that God has designed for your household. Your, fa your, your, your family, beyond your father, your, your family, your father's family, there's so much there. There's so much there. The devil is fighting seriously to keep you out of it. If you think you've seen anything, you ain't seen nothing yet. What you're seeing is just the aroma. You know, when they are cooking solid banga soup, you smell the soup from a distance. You have not even tasted it. Now, if you're excited by the smell, how much when the soup is in front of you? When the solid swallow is there. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I like making good references because so we can identify with it. Because I, I'm coming from a distance most time. My wife makes good to love. From the up the street, I know that something is happening. I know something is happening. My lady, I ain't played. I know for sure. I begin to sing some songs in the car. <laughs> some, kind of that some kind of songs that will come out. You know that this is this is a revival. Something is happening. You, you get excited. Anybody, if your neighbors greet you, you greet them quickly. Hello. You know, how do you say your child? You, you know something is something is look, you cannot miss the smell. Now, if you are this excited by a smell. How much more when the thing is set before you? That's what God's going to tell you guys. If, if what you're seeing, you're happy about and glorifying God, you were grateful to God for your brother marrying yesterday and you, you, you over, overflow in joy. And God is still saying that this is just a spell. <laughs> we pray for your children, all the children in the house. We cover them with the blood. We build a wall of fire bound about them. We install a new spiritual security system around them. We declare that every way the enemy has accessed before to afflict any of your babies, we stand upon the word of God. We declare this day that as the Lord is around Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about it. Even the babies that are not born yet. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. We declare that no weapon that is designed, formed, fashioned, curated, orchestrated, or put together against them will prosper. We declare this day uh, they will fulfill purpose. They will walk in the fullness of the glory of God. Uh, there shall be no harm that will come upon them. They are coming out and coming in. is preserved in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Hallelujah. Please, let us see that. I won't, I won't even really go all the way because this thing is kicking too much in me. David pulled facts when he was dealing with Goliath. He was setting about his confession and it was his evidence of his belief that the engineer and empowered his faith. He said the same God would deliver the lion and bear to me would do the same to you. I listened to Troy yesterday. A lot of you may have been excited and didn't even may not pay attention to what Troy said. But I listened to Troy yesterday when he said, he said, if ever you have had hope 
in something. Let your hope not be dashed. In paraphrase, I don't know if you all heard it. He said, the marriage ceremony of my mom and dad has increased my hope in what I believe. In case you didn't hear it, let me replay it so you can hear. He was preaching my message already. By the way, there is oil on that boy. Your son is oily in the spirit. Oily, so much glory on him. He was saying that every time I face a situation that want to cast down my hope, all I need to do is to look at my mom and dad. I'm like, what? Who gave this boy such intelligence in the spirit to understand something like this? And to bring it back, to bring it in a wedding ceremony as a toast or testament to the love shared by his parents. I felt the coming to hug him to tears. It humbled me. He said, if you lose hope in anything, that's the boy you raised. You should be proud of him. Which means you have set precedence for your son. I said to people that children don't listen to what you say to them. They listen to what you do. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't tell them anything you want to tell them. Say, yes, that I heard it. But they listen to what you do. This is what they, they do. So you have become a symbol of hope for your son. So every time the boy grows up and encounters a challenge, he says the same God. Oh, Jesus. When he said that, I almost, I almost ran to take his hand and begin to preach on that statement. And whoop in that place and scatter the place because my spirit was so excited. He said, the same God who did it for my parents. This is the same thing our children should be speaking of us. The same God. That's why I tell my son. My son, they don't understand. We're coming from my son. Will ask me. We come to set up on Saturday, and I will break up after every service. My son one day said to me, "Said Dad, I sitting there. He said Dad, when would we get to the point where we don't have to set up and then break up?" I was excited. I wasn't challenged. I was excited because. He has seen the beginning. He has seen the foundation laid. So that when we get to the point, let me tell you, when we buy buildings in different places, he will tell the same challenge, say, the same God who brought my father out of this place. I saw it. I saw the former foundation being laid. It's like the Israelites himself. I saw the former temple built. I can preach what I want to preach. He may not even remember what I preached about. But he is seeing what I do. He is seeing the toil. So let us not be afraid to bring our children into what God is taking us through. Sensibly. I know we can't tell them everything. But when we bought our first property, every house was filled. Our babies were with us. Marvin was as small as then he was. Marvin was how old then? Who was that? Five. Five. Every house were filled. They were with us. And through the period, we started teaching them real estate. Through viewing properties and understanding things that we are beginning to catch up at the time. Then my daughter will begin to tell me, God, anytime we drive past that, I'd like to buy that house and use it as a multi um, um, a occupancy house and let tenants pay rent and all that. And I'll just be smiling because we have to take them through it so that they always have a reference point. Many of us, our children may struggle. The people that are, that are not exposed to a teaching like this, their children will struggle. Not anybody here because you've ex you're exposed to it, you know it. Their children may struggle because every time they face a challenge, they're like, mm, let me ask Google. 
they go and ask anybody and anybody can tell them anything. That when they have gone through things in your home, they saw the days that you could not eat. I saw the day that my mom would not wear clothes that we have to wear. I saw the days that my mom would cook and put the food on the ground. It is the size of your food that will tell that you will know that this is mine. You don't need a gift of interpretation, Bishop. The size of your eyes. You will not argue, you know this is mine. <laughs> and the part of the chicken, Christmas Day, the part of the chicken, you know your part. <laughs> Even the fish. You don't need any Holy Ghost to tell you if you go and touch somebody's chicken. You, no Holy Ghost will deliver you because you know your part. Stay in your lane. Just <laughs> we are coming from somewhere. God has, God has brought us a mighty long way. You know, so we have seen that. So every time I encounter that, my mom would leave the house very early and travel several distance, miles, to go and buy what she sells while we're sleeping, 3 a.m. Started trading. So anytime I encounter a challenge, I say, the same God that brought my mom out of that and brought us from where we are. How did she train children through school? My brother was in the house of reps at some point and he would tell his mates that, oh, you don't understand, I used to trade things on my head down the street of Potaka. Now they said, now nah, can you please stop that? And then he would take them to show my mom as reference, evidence, that that's the woman she's the day. Go and ask her. So every time we encounter a challenge, I'm not faced. Nothing faces me. I have enough reference to show. So even if I lack the ability to look into the Bible, I have little evidence, living testament, epistles. So every time any family want to go through the challenge of getting married, I said, the same God who did it for Tony and Salia. I have, this is a new reference. So there are many young people yesterday who now use you as reference point. Testimony because the Bible said that we overcame here what by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. Every time he wants to knock you down, they say, oh, The devil is a liar. Did you not see Stony suit? Did you not see Celia's beautiful dress? Did we not dance the same God that did it for them? Would do it for us. I'll say this and I close because of time. I can. I can't go further than this because I'm also getting emotional all over the place because God is just awesome. God is the good. God is the good. God. God is brought us. This is look. The devil wanna rob you of your negative experiences. Because he's telling you that everything you've been through that was not what you back in for is not useful. That is not true. You got to take advantage of them. So I teach on the law of conversion. You must learn how to convert everything you've been through to your advantage. Everything. All the things I've been through, I document them now. Writing books with them. Earning money from the past experiences. Monetize all your negative experiences. Take advantage of any dirt the enemy throws at you. Plant something, and anytime they throw it there to put it in there, it will grow. The people that don't take advantage of negative situations are those who don't have any seed in the ground. If you have seed in the ground in different places, in different spheres of society, any dirt that is thrown at you, you will use it as manure and put in the ground of where you've planted to your advantage. You will not be fighting with everybody. Not every battle, not everybody you should respond to. Don't cast your pearls on swine. Your words are too expensive to cast on people. Certain people just tell them, oh, thank you, that's all right. Play the fool and walk away. Doesn't make you weak. 
Just walk away and leave them alone. Let them be. Thank you very much. That was a good, candid advice. God bless you. Thank you. And go away. Because this is what David did in 1 Samuel 17. And I close. When he encountered Goliath, his brothers said to him, What have you, who have you left the few sheep with? And I would say, Why did they have to quantify the sheep? Why, did, why didn't they just say, What did you leave the sheep with? But they had to emphasize there was specificity on the size of what is been assigned to make him look small, to undermine you and what God has given you. Oh, is it you? Did you bring that small um, card, the small one, the black small one? Who threw that small black card? Oh, that's your card. Why do you have to say small black card? Did the card not move? <laughs> Did the card not move? But they, when everybody's talking, they say, the Ranger is yours, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know it. Yeah, that's a black one. The, the, uh, the Maserati is yours. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just check it. The small black guy. Why do you have to, to? To make you look small. So, what did you leave those few sheep with? And he said, Is there not a curse? But the thing I like about him, he didn't argue with them, he turned away from them. You gotta be sensitive to know who to talk to and who to turn away from. And when he turned away, he talked to the people that were talking his language, reward. He said, What shall be given to the man who kills Goliath? I like reward. Don't waste your time talking to people. By the way, I met an old Jewish man today here, and he was talking about you. He said, Did you this is how a good name is important? He said, Did you um, join Tony's wedding? I said, Yes. He said, Oh, Tony's a good man. I said, did you buy your, did you buy your car from me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good man. He says, oh, he's an awesome man. You were not even there. So, you got to turn away from certain people and speak to certain people. Let us bow our heads. <laughs> oh, God. I want us to pray that God will help us now to focus on the negative, not focus on stay on the facts and the weekend in our faith. But let God help us to begin to look about and find reasons to bless him, reasons to worship him, reasons to stand strong in the day of adversity, reasons to persevere, to thrive to fight through, to walk through reasons for us to be victorious in the midst of pain, in the midst of shame, in the midst of all the negative words and contradictions. Reasons for us to press through, reasons for, for us to move through. I pray for you that God will strengthen you, uphold you with his own right and of righteousness, that you will not be weary, you will not be weak in well-doing, that I pray that God will give you hope, increase your hope, increase your confidence in him. I pray uh, that God will grant you insight, revelatory insight. I pray uh, to those of you who are investors in this place and online, I pray uh, that as you go into this week and the end of this month, uh, that areas where you have toiled, that God will open your eyes spiritually uh, to begin to identify reasonable deals, uh, to identify uh, uh, potential partners, uh, to identify people to partner with, people to liaise with, people to, to coordinate with, people to engage with. I pray that uh, that God, beyond the physical, that God will open your spiritual eyes. Um, that you will know where to be, where to go. Uh, you will know what coffee shop to buy coffee from. You, you will understand what airport to travel out of and to fly into. Uh, you will understand where to travel and who to encounter, what seat to choose. Uh, how important these little details. Uh, I pray um, that God will open the eyes of your understanding. I pray for you uh, that you will not be moved by what moves everybody. Uh, I pray that you will be influenced by the Spirit. Uh, I pray to stay that you will understand uh, beyond the physical, beyond what people are showing, uh, beyond what the stats say, uh, beyond what the government uh, websites say, uh, beyond what the weatherman, what the economists say, uh, beyond what the financial expert or the doctors say, beyond what the surgeons say. Uh, I pray for you uh, that your eyes be open, that you see uh, what God has done before, what God uh, is able to do for the Bible say, uh, that God is able to do uh, exceeding the Abundantly found above what you think. Ask of imagine. I pray that you will not faint, you will not be weak and weary. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. I feel that special grace on my spirit about investors. I don't know if anyone is getting into a deal. It might be in this place or online. If anybody getting into a deal in this week or this month, my prayer for you, I keep seeing a shift coming. My prayer for you that God will move you in the direction of the person you're meant to engage with. The people you're meant to partner with. Because the first people that come may not be who it is. That you will not be carried away by their looks or what they present in front of you. But rather God will open your spiritual eyes. That God will anoint your eyes with eyes salve. That you will see beyond what is being seen. Uh, you will not be moved by what is in front, but you will see, you will, you will have the ability to read between the lines. That you will understand what is not said. You will hear what has not been said in the name of Jesus. My prayer that you will not fall into any fraudulent investment. That you will not be deceived. That you will not be scammed. That no matter how clear it looks, you will not be forced. That I pray for you that your hands will not be forced into sign and signatures and signing lines that are not designed for you. I pray that you will not be cornered. You will not be cornered. You will not be manipulated, deceived into doing things and signing paperwork that is not relevant for your progress. But I pray that God, even as you're looking at it, God will amplify what you're reading, that beyond what is written, you'll be able to understand as you read in the name of Jesus. My prayer for you that every deceitful person about you, that God will accept Exposed them in the name of Jesus. Every hypocrite and every psychophant, everyone that is manipulative about you, trying to force your hand. I pray that God will expose them about you in the name of Jesus. That God will uncover things about you for you to see in the name of Jesus. I declare to stay upon I'm feeling it anointed. I declare upon you ah, that God will allow you to have access to information that has not yet become public public knowledge, public information yet, that you will begin to get access and insight into what has not been published nor displayed, that you your actions will be influenced by what you have read based on what God has shown, that you will make decisions informed, not by the media, but informed by the spirit in the name of Jesus, that you will not come behind, you will not be reactive, but you will be proactive, you will preempt danger, you will make effort and you will divert and you will move in different directions in the name of God feeling that prophetic unction right now but I pray for you that when the trap is set in front of you ah that God will give you the ability to maneuver I pray for the grace of maneuverability in the name of Jesus that you will be able to swing away from the enemy's danger that you will be able to swing away from the enemy's trap I pray for you that when the set of trap based on what they know of you uh, by divine intelligence uh, that God gives you insight uh, and you take a different direction uh, I pray for you uh, that God will cause you, not the enemy uh, that God will cause you to rest and relax uh, because the time has not come to move uh, until the enemy becomes weary and tired uh, and get out of the way uh, I declare by the authority of the Lord uh, that blockades are removed uh, I declare by the authority of the Lord uh, that in the cause and lifted. I declare by the authority of the Lord that injunctions in the spirit are cancelled and lifted. I declare that every order that is not according to the law of the word of the Lord is therefore removed from your path. I declare the stay that everything that has been set up with the intention to inhibit you, to prohibit, restrict you and cause you to falter. I declare it is obliterated in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I declare that the same Lord that the Bible said that he counseled every handwriting of ordinance. I stand upon the word and I declare this day every written judgment, every spoken judgment, every pronounced judgment against your life is counseled by the blood of Jesus. I speak this into your household in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is done. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is done. Amen. Glory. Let's celebrate God in this house. Amen. 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 
God is good. Hmm. The things that we see, the things that we cannot say. Hmm. Hallelujah. But it is done. It is done. Amen. We want to take Thanks for watching. Hope our broadcast positively impacted you. Follow Dabo Davies on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Click on the subscribe button and be notified of every time we post new content.